Okay, very good. Fine, so we're here with our first case for today. Um, um, I would probably a relatively complex case, uh, critical limb schema, maybe Sven, you introduce the case? Yeah, sure, thank you, Andre, and good morning also from my side. This is an 80-year-old patient. Uh, he has a chronic pobletial occlusion on the right side, as uh, this has clinical data. He has uh, some small ulcerations on the right foot and also on the calf. Uh, with rest pain, ABI is uh, low, 0.22. Um, he has arterial hypertension, a smoker, and had coronary artery disease as well. Um, uh, elsewhere, there was already an undergrade recanalization attempt of the popliteal CTO uh, undertaken. However, it failed. Next slide, show the uh, corresponding angiography. Um, you can see this here, it's a right limb uh, pobletial occlusion, run off um, mostly via the anterior tibial artery, but also patent peroneal artery as well. Um, as Andre said, it's a complex case, uh, more difficult because this patient also has an endoprothesis at the knee joint, which makes it quite difficult sometimes to visualize the occlusion. However, our strategy, next slide, is here to do recanalization, of course, Steiner. first with a uh, crossover uh, approach. We have uh, actually a seven French. She's in here because she has Remote also very tortuous iliac this. arteries. <laughs> and we think seven French she's like here provides more English. support, more stability. Uh, if it's yeah, not possible to do the recanalization in an antigrade okay. fashion, then we come from a retrograde excess via the peroneal artery which is also partially occluded, so maybe if we puncture the peroneal artery, we can also recanalize this artery in this patient with uh, CLI. Yeah, and then uh, we probably will need the uh, superestent here to, 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 yeah, to finally uh, solve the problem in the popliteal artery. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, as you notice, it's not the patient uh, which we um, sent as uh, the one which we planned. Uh, and unfortunately, our remote control is dead here for our machine. So I have to ask someone outside to show you the picture. So let this scene please run here. So here, once again, you can see the um, the popliteal occlusion, that is, of course, also adding to the complexity that you actually cannot really see the lesion. Uh, let's see how we can twist the leg to, to turn the, uh, to have the artery free from that endoprosthesis. Next, please. And below then you can see that the flow is really bad. Uh, and the peroneal artery, which we're intending actually to use as an excess, is uh, mm -hmm, very small. And uh, next, please. Uh, shows a little further down. Yeah, next, yeah, here is a little stronger injection with the sheath. We had the sheath in the mid SFA, now we pulled it back to the profunda artery. Better flow to the anterior, of course. We could also puncture the anterior artery. Next, please. Shows you, however, that um, at the distal portion. Uh, maybe stop here, so the anterior tibial gets very small or has a stenosis here at the distal portion of the um, tibial area and uh, fills the peroneal again. And um, then uh, please continue with that angio uh, or here. Uh, you can see that the filling of the foot is uh, relatively bad, so at the end, in fact, we are planning to, uh, to recanalize both arteries and um, therefore uh, I think it makes sense again here to try to puncture the, the peroneal artery. Okay, so that would be our area where we would puncture very distal, right um, proximal uh, to, the, uh, to the connection of the fibula and tibial bone here at the distal portion of. So, yeah. uh, Andre, maybe just for the sake of understanding how you choose your distal puncture site. So, what's the What's the reason again not to use the anterior tibial as a as an excess site, but rather go for this very narrow peroneal artery? So, uh, well, for the popliteal occlusion, yeah. So, uh, of course, I mean sometimes popliteal occlusions are really difficult uh, to get through. Also from retrograde, you may need even 35-inch wires. That requires four French, that means uh, anterior would be a better choice. However, then sometimes um, 
the anterior, of course, gets um, 90 degree into the popliteal segment. Uh, now it works again. And uh, then, of course, um, the talkability and uh, uh, for, for the anterior excess is also not the best. And coming from the peroneal R up is maybe a straighter way into the occlusion. Here in this case, I really think you, you can really do both excesses, of course, if it gets difficult. Here, the distal portion of the peroneal, we will I maybe rethink and, and puncture the proximal under tibial. But at the end, I think this is not a bad um, error to excess. Yeah, uh, peroneal, uh, can we take a sheath in? I think we can take a 2.9 French sheath easily in. That's not a problem. For French, I would hesitate and rather choose the under tibial. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, I have a question. You know, we've increasingly taken this approach of uh, accessing the vessel that's least likely to result in arterial compromise to the foot if we have difficulty. In this case, that would obviously be the perineal because yeah. the anterior tibial artery is patent. It's sort of a good way to start that you have much to gain and little to lose. Is that any consideration or is that just... Um uh, just anatomical. Yes, in fact, also sometimes, but ac actually not really a strong argument because we, I mean, we've, we uh, followed, I mean, many, many patients. We really do not see any problem with, with uh, our puncture excesses. So at the end, this is for, for us uh, an argument, but maybe the weaker one. So I have here a seven centimeter long 21 gauge needle. And the flow of contrast is very, very slow down. Uh, waiting here for a long time, nothing happens. Here, very faint peroneal, too faint to puncture, I would say. I feel some resistance, but I think I shouldn't be. No, no, no I'm, I'm also not deep enough here in the calf with my needle yet. Just a moment. And under, as you're working, this is Miguel. Do you ever use DSA at this point when it's so distal and so sluggish, uh, rather than giving them a total yeah. contrast, 100%, maybe a little DSA? Hmm? Uh, yeah, you mean DSA? So, yeah. OK. A DSA, uh, yes, but at the end, of course, DSA, then you move the leg while you go down with the, uh, with the wire. Let's take the cook wire. And uh, therefore, no, actually, I try to not do this. I, sh I think just fluoro is the best way to do. I can see them a little bit. So I take now actually not the wire in which um, comes with a pedal puncture set. Mm, no. OK. Not so good. Blood flow is fantastic through the needle. Let's take a PT2 yeah. wire or something. PT2? PT2. Not sure whether you can see this on the camera. I will go here now, contralateral. But, and now, Miguel, this is, um, I think, now a good idea to either do DSA or to take a road map. Otherwise, with just fluoro, I will have here a lot of um, difficulties to see this. I'll just take some fluoro now. So, Andre, you're actually listening to one of my oh. advices? Road map, sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm, sorry. <laughs> Again, flow is so bad that it doesn't reach down. Hi, Andre. This is Mehdi. Uh, just wanted to ask a question. How often do you use the wire from the micropuncture kit? I haven't had good experience with it, like you just showed. How often do you use that versus using, you know, let's say V18 or uh, PT or something like that? Yeah, correct. I, I do not use it very frequently. Because uh, the tip is, in fact, you're right. Must be seen, actually. Yeah, sorry, this is not. Maybe I need another angle here into that, that wire, a little more. 
I use it actually when I do ultrasound puncture because it, uh, it's nicely seen on ultrasound and uh, these polymer coated wires are not. So here I probably punctured through the artery. I will pull the needle a little bit yeah. back. Yeah, but I'll just blink this. Eh? Mm. Yeah, this time not so easy. Unfortunately, really, I cannot depict the artery. Still very good flow. Let's do, let's follow Miguel's advice and do a real DSA. Uh, here, I think, however, ultrasound, of course, also not really an alternative. Okay. So probably the needle's still too far through the artery. Gonna pull it a little bit back. Still very hard to see. Can you give me a little more angle here into that wire tip? This moment. Yeah, Mehdi's pointing something out, which is amazing how even though you're through and through, you're still getting all this flow back, which would confuse you. Huh? You would think you're smacking the lumen. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a good point, which we've learned from Very you cool. through the years, that you don't yeah. inject this needle, which would just create a stain there. I mean, the natural tendency would be to try to inject some dye and visualize the artery there, but that's probably something you want to avoid at this point. Yeah. No, no, I usually pull half a millimeter and it goes in, but in this case, will not. Probably needless out now. Um, yeah, okay, this time not so easy. So we gave some nitro and uh, that should not be the problem. Well, I mean, of course, now we could have uh, spasm already. No, no, I think the needle is out now. And we have to, unfortunately, re-puncture, which maybe, of course, in this area be difficult because of spasm. Yeah. Just a moment. Yeah, maybe I have to press maybe for a minute or so. And uh, not sure whether you want to give a presentation during that time or. Yeah, we, we, can, cert we, can, we can certainly do that. Um, give you a little bit of yeah. time to prepare. Uh, so, yeah, the John Rundbeck yes. uh, would be the first presenter. Um, speaking about angiographic anatomy of PTK vessels and pedal plantar loop. Jetzt sehen wir wahrscheinlich gar nichts mehr, nicht wahr? All right, so we can bring up that presentation. So we're actually going to go back to the case. Uh, Andre, uh, Dirk had to step out here for a quick second. Uh, but I've seen behind the scenes that you've made a lot of advance. Why don't you walk us through uh, what's been going on? Yeah, so I think the real problem here was that the artery immediately became, uh, uh, was, uh, had, had spasm. Uh, let me try to show you any, here you can see, so there's actually no bleeding, but you can see that the artery where we have tried to puncture nearly closed down. So uh, we, uh, uh, right away punctured a little bit more proximal and in fact really had the same problem. Needle was in, the, the uh, flow out was really good, but uh, it was difficult to get um, a wire in. Eventually, by once again pulling the wire needle a little bit uh, and twisting here the PT2, so an 014 wire, better in this kind of situation than an 018 uh, brought the wire. To interrupt in. you right there real quick. 
you're you're doing a lateral, very lateral projection there that allows you to know when that wire goes yeah. in there, correct? Is this? Exactly. So you poke an AP, yeah, but then yeah. as you advance your wire, you're going to completely move the AI to lateral, correct? So post, uh, this is still the, 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 the peronal artery, not, not the AT, peronal. I said you, you puncture so, uh, in, in anterior posterior, and then you go to a lateral view for the wire advancement. Yeah, uh, okay. okay. Didn't hear you, yeah. So, so this is right oblique to puncture the peronal, so right oblique to open up the space between the two bones to see the artery. And uh, when you have back bleeding and the wire cannot get in, then you change the arm position to left oblique. That's left oblique 20 to open up the angle between the needle and the artery. Fantastic. And then you gently and slowly pull back the needle tip until your wire wants, without any resistance, resistance very bad, uh, goes in. So, Andre, I, I know you probably got a lot to work to get here, but I think it's critically important. You just talk to kind of your wire progression selection, if, you know, what wires you use, why you would use them, and, you know, and if one doesn't work, why you switch to a different? Yeah, so usually I puncture uh, retrograde approaches for me an O18 wire because, I mean, you, these cases are usually very difficult. You couldn't pass from undergrade, so you need rather strong wires. If the artery is not too small, um, usually an O18 wire goes nicely in. I prefer, in fact, the polymer-coated wires over non-polymer-coated wires. Unless I'm puncturing with ultrasound, then you cannot see polymer-coated wires, but you choose rather the one, the wire, which comes, for example, with a pedal puncture set. However, in such a case, artery, excess artery, very small, or a lot of spasm, then better we change to an 014 wire, again, polymer-coated, um, to, to drill and, and smoothly get the wire in. Yeah, that's basically all. In this case, now, wire went in, but of course, if it's in only some centimeters, too floppy to follow with the support catheter or whatever. So therefore, you have to bring it further in to land it somewhere. It doesn't need to go f up to the artery, but it could also land in a collateral. And what we did in this case is we just pushed the wire through the connection between the peronal and the antitibial artery. Um, and the wire, as you can see, goes here into the dorsalis pedis. Uh, for now, it's in for 20 centimeters, and now I have the stable part of the wire in to be able to get um, yeah, the pedal sheath or the support catheter in. If I'm only in with an 014, I'd rather not push the, the pedal sheath now in, the 2.9 French sheath, but rather go in with a support catheter tracking over an 018, and then I exchange to an 018 wire, and then I take the pedal excess sheath in. Ambas? There you go. Okay. The pedal excess sheath. Uh, so so we took now the support catheter in. You can see these three markers, and now you can see once again that, in fact, <laughs> the anterior tibial is actually uh, the more reasonable excess artery. Well, now we're in. And um, the wire here went now nicely up here to the uh, uh, diseased peronal artery. And uh, we have now the um, support catheter, the quick cross, uh, nearly at the, the knee joint, and now I exchange to an 018 wire to bring the pedal sheath in. Yeah, that's where we are now. Okay, pedal is frozen set. Come, come, come. Here. Have to be clapper off. So of course, I could try now without pedal sheath, but um, I think it's going to be complex. Um, would be nice probably to be able to change from support catheter only to balloon, vice versa. So, therefore, peel the sheath. For, uh, for the audience, as they are putting the sheath in, uh, the take-home message is you do retrograde because it aids in crossing a very complex lesions. But once you put your retrograde axis, you have the ability to do sheathless and just use a micro-braided catheter or you have the ability to put a very low profile sheath that would allow you potentially to do more, either inject, do an angiogram, maybe put a little, uh, you could upsize the wire if you need to. Uh, so it, it, and at the end, what I've noticed, I think it's operator comfort, 
Some of us don't like to put a sheath at, at all. Some of us do it, and some do it in a selective way. Uh, for a particular case, they feel they want it, then they're going to do it. And I think you could see it there. Uh, that's the uh, outer cannula of the micro sheath, and then comes the uh, little uh, side port valve that you just screw in, and now you have potential access to inject whatever you need. Well, that's uh, great points you, you raised, Miguel. I, the one question I wanted to ask Andre and you guys, uh, when you use a micropuncture sheet, uh, Andre, do you prefer the soft one I see using the cook? The cook soft one, but sometimes that doesn't go in, and sometimes I've used a stiffer uh, micropuncture uh, sheet. Uh, any, what is your experience with that? Aha, uh -huh, you mean the profile of the, of the sheet is not good enough to break through the calcific wall of the artery? Sometimes it's too soft, it's not uh, stiff enough. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's a little difficult to get in if the artery is very calcified. Well, what I usually uh, do in this kind of situation, I reinsert the needle over the wire into the arterial wall and just screw the needle twisted within the arterial wall to create some kind of hole in that, that, uh, that arterial wall. And then uh, the sheath uh, regularly goes nicely in. So here comes the real problem. We cannot see anything. Um, so he I has to go understand. into frog leg somehow. The spine müssen wir jetzt mal so ein bisschen so im Knie beugen. So wunderbar. Yeah. Let me ask you guys up here on the panel a question. I mean, uh, obviously it's an unbelievable demonstration of the uh, perineal access, but um, I don't know if he has an anti-grade femoral approach. But you know, we still tend to try with an anti-grade approach, even with the whole C-top classification, which a jihad is promoted. You know, you'd be surprised. Sometimes the wire goes right down, and you avoid having to do this uh, pedal access. So what's been your strategy? Do you always start retrograde? Do you always start anti-grade? Do you, uh, you know, uh, uh, give it a shot? Or are you planning rendezvous? I mean, how do you guys like to approach it? So super simplistic. If you have a common femoral pulse and you have a triphasic, triphasic waveform, it's going to be 100% anti-grade access, if, even in the SFA if you need to. And then give it one shot. <laughs> the one shot, uh, if it doesn't float immediately, I, I, I re, you know, I'll, I'll go to retrograde fairly quickly. That's the, that's what changes. You don't, you don't stay there for 20 minutes. You, you go quickly to a retrograde approach to get through your day. That, that's how we see it. I guess it depends on the landing zone too, above that uh, anterior artery arch. How much calcium? Because theoretically, it's not that hard to get subintimal and re-enter if you had enough room. Especially since your ultimate strategy is going to be a supera anyway. I mean. Exactly. Right. So where are you at, Andre, right now? Yeah, so we move now the uh, leg into a frog leg position. And um, as you could see, the wire from retrograde went now sub, -sub intimal here. And uh, at that plug, what are my intention is now is to also bring once again a wire a little bit into that occlusion from undergrade balloon that area here, and uh, in, in that way maybe facilitate wire passage uh, from undergrade. Of course, we could now also take a balloon in from retrograde, but maximal diameter would be three millimeter with the advanced micro balloon, or well, we could take a coronary balloon in with four or bigger diameters, um, and then destroy the plug from retrograde, and by this, um, facilitate wire passage from undergrade. But I always find it more easy to do it that way, balloon from undergrade and wire passage from retrograde. Okay. You know, Andre, recently uh, we've been doing something a little different. I don't know if you've done this, but with enormous success, rather than doing the, the uh, you know, double balloon, we found if you bring an 035 catheter down, an 035 glide wire or hydrophilic wire, and just sort of start looping it and buckling it and integrate, most of the time, it creates a, a plane between the anti-grade and retrograde without having to resort to balloons, allowing you now to pass the wire or retrograde. So it breaks up those septa between the two false loom that you've created. And it's obviously very uh, quick and inexpensive, and no exchange is really required. So, uh. OK, yeah. Nice. Uh, uh, this is going in a collateral, probably. Not so nice. Yeah, the problem here, of course, I mean, with this technique, you would rather like to do some kind of um, yeah, twisting 
this is the machine, um, at least, let's say, 90 degree um, around to see that in both angulations, somehow the wires from both sides are in the same area, but of course, in this case, it's not really possible. <laughs> That's actually, I think, very important before you start with this kind of technique and uh, due to the tap. Not so easy, what do you think? Sunny, shall we try nevertheless? No, huh? Is it safe? I mean, we could balloon here a little bit. I think here it's still inside the balloon from undergrade. And then, Andre, huh? remind me where that CTO starts. Is it that fat? calcified little two centimeter segment? It's actually at that curve, I would say. Oh, at the, so a little um, higher up, okay. Here, here, uh, yeah. So yeah, now we could, yeah, take yeah, a seat. Yeah. Well, CTO wire, of course, could also be helpful now. I mean, this is the proximal uh, beginning of the CTO. Uh, uh, we could take a CTO wire now, but I mean, CTO wires in an angled artery is also not so easy. No, this is not so helpful here. Let's try to open the balloon and push the wire now. But yeah, I think we 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 should really go with with the balloon from undergrade further into the occlusion. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we didn't do anything uh, to that plug to facilitate here. Wire passage from integrator. Uh, let me balloon here, but my God, um, I think this is still very safe. Is this a five millimeter balloon? And now, if you push, that's a four. four. Yeah, you could use a five. Aha, uh -huh, so maybe here. Notice from the anti-grade approach, you're using a 018 system. Is there a particular reason uh, for this? I mean, usually I, I think you go 035. I, you know, is this? Uh, is there a reason using 018, or is it just the way it is? No, uh, sometimes, of course, if it's very calcified, it's very difficult to bring, uh, connect some FMCT, uh, to bring uh, a balloon into that occlusion, and then uh, 018 is uh, of advantage. Here in this case, yeah, next step would maybe use to use of a 035 system. But let's try once again here that balloon and uh, potentially a CTO wire from retrograde, or I open the balloon once again and Sunny, is it possible now? No, huh? And Pull that's an 018, 018 microcatheter from below, correct? Uh, yeah, it's a CXI catheter. So how about a CTO victory not wire, not something like that? Yeah, yeah, sure. But as you know, I mean, CTO wires in, an a, in, in a curved anatomy is also not so easy. But let's do it. Oh, okay. I oh, think I you could do it. I think you could do it. I trust you. Victor, connect. <laughs> yeah. Just a moment. I mean, of course, if this yeah, doesn't I work mean, with the wire, you can always do a, ret a rendezvous, a retrograde target, and then an out back into the target from below. So, you know, obviously, that's going to be the last step, but just a matter of time here. Yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. It's a matter of time. Uh, not to be too aggressive in the beginning because, I mean, I, I don't want to have perforations now from both sides. That, of course, makes it then more complex. Now, the real problem is here really this um, um, uh, knee replacement because uh, once we have both wires in the occlusion, what we constantly do is we, we, we turn the C arm from one uh, side to the other to see how close wires are, and that's uh, something which is now. Uh, no, really not possible here in this case. Uh, uh, either this way or that way. Can you send me here inflate the balloon? So, Andre, this is somewhat of a critical point, but I've got a few minutes to get through this session, and I still have two short talks. Do you think if we uh, let you go real quick and come back to you before the break? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Was tiefer rein. Was das Mhm. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, What's the situation Hi. like? Yeah, still they are still struggling as you can see here. Now we took in fact a balloon in from retrograde. So this is a coronary four 
20 balloon to destroy the plug from retrograde. And, um, and uh, Sven is now trying from undergrade to follow that balloon. Den kannst du mir nicht drehen. Just a moment. Yeah, over here. So. If this doesn't work, we may do now the double balloon technique. What do you think? Double balloon. Moment, he wants to twist the catheter once again. No. Okay, yeah, we still have to struggle here. Of course, I could now try to get another access to that occlusion from retrograde on the right side from the plug. An alternative, since you have the retrograde balloon, is just bring an outback now from the top and puncture into that balloon and obviously exteriorize this. You could this. also, yeah. you, exactly, you could also do this. Svenny? Noch ein Ballon in 45 Pacific. Just a moment. I try to bring that balloon a little bit up from retrograde again. Come, open. And uh, yeah, we're gonna take here. No, still. So Andre, I think Sub I think we may yeah. just continue with one more talk, and uh, and then we have time for you. Of course, yes, yes, okay. sure. So then uh, I asked maybe Shishibor uh, to speak about BTK total occlusion crossing uh, his choice of wire. Thanks, Dirk. And uh, this is a great case which really highlights all the things that we are going to be discussing. Uh, so I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, obviously, uh, CLI is uh, anonymous with uh, CTOs and significant below knee disease, as Andre is showing. The challenge with below the knee is exactly all the things that uh, Andre is showing us. This is a popliteal case, but we have all seen. The issues with the CTOs is lack of target, not having a target distally to connect point A to point B, having issues with significant calcification, and the anatomy not being clear. Is this the pronial or is this a dominant PT? And those kind of things and the cost and the time that it takes to cross these lesions. Now, to cross these lesions, we have the anti-grade approach, which we have been discussing. When we do anti-grade, we talk about luminal and uh, subintimal. Obviously, most of the time, we don't know where we are, to be honest. But if you can try to be luminal, you can. Subintimal is more easier because when we loop, in general, we go subintimal. Not always, but in general. Then we have the retrograde option that we're discussing here, tibiopedal retrograde wire-based approach. And then we have now the anti-grade tibiopedal wire-based approach. And I will show you what I mean by that. And obviously, there are the CTO devices. However, their success rate is similar to the wire-based approaches. So what is the anti-grade pedal tibial access? This was a case that we tried to get the pedal arch open from an anti-grade approach, despite multiple attempts. We couldn't do it. The PT was totally occluded for 35, 40 centimeter. We tried to come down the PT. We were having a struggle. So we decided to get anti-grade approach into the PT way down in the foot, and then come in the anti-grade approach into the pedal arch to open up the pedal arch and go up the AT. So this is uh, something that we are now doing more and more, trying to minimize, try, trying to go through 30 centimeter, 40 centimeter of PT to do this. We can shorten the time and the efficiency of the procedure. Regarding the CTO devices, there is a number of them out there. I think for below the knee, the ones that usually most people use, I don't usually use CTO devices. I'm more wire-based. But people have used the, the spinning, the Vions device, I think is reasonable, the true path. Uh, uh, folks have used for the tibial vessels, and uh, the, more, the other ones I think are more for the SFA and the popliteal. Regarding the wire choice, honestly, we can have a three-hour talk on wires and the gram tip and, the, and different hydrophilic, jacketed, CTO, and those things. I'm just giving you what I use. So this is, in my opinion, you just need two, three wires of each category and you can get across most of these lesions based on the approaches we discussed, anti-grade, retrograde, and those kind of things. So in regard to hydrophilic jacketed, this should say really jacketed because most of the wires nowadays are hydrophilic. It's really jacketed wires. I like Pilot 200 for below the knee, tibial vessels, both in the anti-grade and retrograde approach. 
I like the uh, Glide Gold. So those two are my go-to wires from the standpoint of jacketed wires, Pilot 200 and the Glide Gold 018. Pilot 200 is a 014 wire. From a CTO wires, there is a slew of them. I like the 250T, uh, which uh, is, I think, the most, uh, the Abbott wire is the most effective, is the 018 system. But these are some of the other ones that you can use uh, in your armamentarium. Regarding closing collaterals, you know, we use some of the wires from the uh, coronary experience, the Xion and the Fielder FC, I think are reasonable wires to use to cross collaterals and then you can exchange. And from the standpoint of the workhorse wire, meaning that once you cross the lesion and now you want to treat, I like using some of these more heavier body workhorse wires like the Grand Slam or the BMW once I've crossed the lesion and I don't want to perforate, I don't want to be worried about pulling the wire back and those kind of things. Once you have the wire, you need a support. And we talked about this today with Andre showing his case. Uh, we want to have a support, and these are the different support catheters that you can use. Typically for TBL vessels, I use the 018 support catheter because it allows you to go between 014 and 018. And that's the choice that I usually use for SFA pop. Usually I use the Navi cross, which works very well. In regards to the approach, just in the last minute or two, uh, obviously, uh, we, like I said, these are my wires. I don't like to spin. I like to drive the wire, especially if it's a CTO wire. I like to do 180 degree turns, not spinning, because I think that actually catches tissue. And you obviously want, want to have your uh, um, uh, support catheter close by. And this, what basically this says is that if your support catheter is not close uh, to the tip of the wire, you lose force. So you want to be as close as possible to the tip of the wire if you need power to be able to get across the lesion. We also have the J-wire, the subintimal approach. Everybody knows this approach, obviously. We use it a lot in the SFA pop. In the tibial, it's better not to do this because we don't have a stents. We don't like to use stents in the tibial vessels as much as we can. So if you can try to cross luminal way, it's probably better. But if you have to use it, it is obviously there, and most people are familiar with this, how to do this. There is also this issue of uh, the difficult cases. So what do you do if you have difficulty? Obviously, you can do telescoping. You can bring the sheet closer. For the tibial crossing, I always use anti-grade approach if possible because it gives me the power to cross these lesions. There is other approaches such as the body wire uh, approach. And obviously, you can always get access closer, like I showed you, the anti-grade uh, tibiopedal access. Uh, these are some examples. I think that the most important thing is that you don't want to spend an hour and a half to cross the lesion and not be able to make the wires meet. And this is what Andre is doing in this case, knowing the cart, reverse cart, the parallel balloon, and the facilitated reentry. knowing these techniques are extremely important because you don't want to get to the point where Andre is and then be a stuck. So in summary, I would say pick two or three jacketed wires, pick one or two CTO wires that you are familiar with, uh, consider the anti-grade approach, but quickly move to the retrograde approach if you cannot cross in anti-grade, and then use a support catheter. I use the 018 CXI because it's braided, but that allows me to travel between 014 and 018 in crossing tibial vessels. Thank you. Thank you very much, Midi. We now go back to Leipzig. Yeah. But as you see, we are still struggling. Sometimes it's just difficult. Um, and uh, we probably now will take uh, the reentry device in and uh, command and poke into the balloon from retrograde. Command, so it's still not where we want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so um, we have to continue to work here on that lesion and uh, not really, uh, we don't know how, how long it will still take. Can you see the balloon Yeah. The nice thing about this is, you know, you're now well, in the P2 popliteal, so you have a lot of latitude what you can do without compromising that outflow. So, however you end up accomplishing, you know, yeah. this meet and greet, right. uh, you know, ultimately you're going to put a stent in, and all those dissection planes will just disappear. So, 
Ja. Yeah, the problem I see here a little bit with uh, a re-entry device is that, again, the R3 is really makes a curve here. Of course, I mean, now being a little bit proximal to the um, endoprosthesis, we could now straighten the leg again. What do you think, Sunny? Uh -huh. Let's straighten the leg. If you could balloon here once again. Here, can you balloon there once again? Yeah, sure. Here. Hmm? Yeah, as you see, it's not completely closed, but we could take a little, little bigger balloon now also. Admiral 640. Yeah, or indeed, use the re-entry device now here. Noch mal hier ballonieren, ein bisschen tiefer. Ein bisschen tiefer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, again, what, what, what's your plan? Uh, Probably next, ah, here, here, ah, this is perfect here. Maybe now getting to another side, okay. I think now I'm through, okay. Oof, a lot of work. During the first fine. attempt. <laughs> okay, fine. So, yeah, next is now, of course, to snare the wire, Jatkins normal. I think the plan and is to, uh, to stay with you a little bit and, um, see how you finish the case. I mean, there are still at least five minutes left, so shouldn't be a big deal now. Okay. <laughs> that was a really nice demonstration how of you kind of move up through the artery to a different level if you don't succeed at one level. Rather than struggling at one calcium. level, where there may be calcium that uh, prevents you communicating from top and bottom, you can kind of migrate that above and below as long as you're not compromising any other critical vessels. Yeah. Yeah, we might have dissected a little higher than we wanted, but that area was still quite diseased and uh, needs treatment anyway. Okay, yeah. Yeah, maybe here. So I take another wire in to snare. Um, ein Pacific 420. Okay, so the Judkins has to open up its angle very much. And I take a talker. Ich bräuchte mal einen, oh no, that's good. Okay, you twist it to the other side or? Wherever you want me to. Here, just a moment. Oh, oops. Mm. Is the uh, catheter really touching the arterial wall? Or um, uh, can you twist it side? more? You twist it just more uh, to that it's side. It's jumping a little bit. It's jumping quite a lot. Oh. Everything is jumping. Yeah, uh -huh. it's touching the catheter, I think. Uh, this can, of course, be a little tricky. No, can Other you side? pull a little higher? Other side? Uh, no, that side. Here, I think this is a good area here. Maybe? I try uh, so it's jumping so much that maybe you should give him some Atricar. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes you need, of course, then a six French guiding catheter, Jatkin six French Schumann's catheter. So I can, can see and feel the tip of the catheter once I feel it as here. Uh, the next pulse brings it away again. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, I can try but I'm about, uh, to bring that catheter up. Bring it very close, but that usually doesn't work now. No, um, ah, yeah, okay. Ah. So, hmm. 
just a moment, need to bring a little uh, different angle here into that catheter, the wire, sorry, Hoffman. Hoffman. There's a few different alternatives, as uh, Andre is showing. One, you can recapture it on a diagnostic catheter. Two, you could snare it like PK did it earlier. And then Spectronetics has this little catheter, too. I don't know if you guys have played with it. So it's a centering balloon that, it, as, as you inflate it, it creates a cone. And so you can recapture wires fairly quickly. So that's also another altern alternative. Uh, may I say what, Philips now? Yeah, Philips. Yeah, they own this little catheter that creates a cone, and so you re-enter real quick. So that's a, uh, a third way, and you can do this. Um, but ultimately, obviously, the the most complex segment of the of the case has been, uh, you know, performed. This is just a matter of uh, getting the wire into the right place and then delivering therapy. Okay. Oh. So, so now what you are planning to do, Andre? Yeah, we changed now to a six French guiding because this uh, jumping here of that catheter with every heartbeat just makes it impossible. So we just take a little bigger lumen catheter in. Nimmst du rein? Okay. Auf die andere Seite noch. Mhm. Okay. Nope. So just, uh, and now probably, uh, okay. So that's very easy. Okay, so now we have our, warte mal, du musst ihn nochmal halten, halten, halten. Katheter? Weil der Katheter. Nein. Drehen, Mann, drehen. So uh, the tip of the CXI does not want to into, into Bait here the Judkins. Okay, then I do it like this, just a moment. So now I push the wire through and we take a 420 balloon down to balloon the uh, popliteal artery. Okay, so wire passage is done. That really took some time. And now we balloon. So I think we we uh, I think we probably have to leave you here uh, at this point because I think also the the other cast lab is ready PK here in Mount Sinai and we also have to switch panels, but uh, I think uh, once you are uh, advanced here with your procedure, you can certainly uh, on a later stage show your result and show us the essential steps of the procedure. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so then uh, I would suggest, uh, well, we invite the next. Okay, so I think, yeah, we left uh, you uh, when we had the pulpal wire, then we ballooned that popliteal area with first four millimeter balloon, five millimeter balloon, and this year is after five millimeter balloon. Uh, clearly, uh, this is a superior case for us and definitely not yet well prepared, so we went for a short 640, you can see here that uh, also with 16, 18 atmospheres, balloon is not fully open. So clearly for us, a sign that we are not well prepared or not, not yet prepared to take a 5.5 superior in. So we took a shorter balloon. Now the 640 opened, but still, I mean, with all this, it was really very hard. So therefore we rather than take also a short 620 in. And also here, we were borderline satisfied that this would be enough. Uh, preparation for a 5.5 superior. However, at that point, we already had some perforation. Yeah, so it doesn't look big, but I think in the popliteal segment, the tissue is relatively uh, dense, and therefore um, bleeding is not that uh, impressive as maybe for in, in the SFA. But here, things like this, and knowing that we are not yet fully prepared for the superior uh, is for us an indication to take a Viaban in. That's so this we call our crack and pave or pave and crack technique, which, which we have really good results. So we took a short six millimeter 
uh, via 650 millimeter wire band in, and then we uh, ballooned once again with high pressure 26 atmospheres to really prepare that area for a superior stand. So clearly, wire band is not strong enough to, I mean, overcome that recoil forces over time, and you can also see that proximal distal has also some recoil disease. So therefore, we usually reline re these. Um, uh, via bands uh, with superior stents and into a six via band, a 5.5 superior stent fits nicely in. And uh, yeah, I show you the result later. Then we went down uh, the peronal, we uh, took the wire in there and ballooned uh, the disease of the peronal artery. And now I just want to show you uh, the final result. Just a moment, let me switch here to, to these angios. Um, so here you can see, yeah, I, I start here with the foot. So this is here now the foot angio, and uh, you can see we have a very strong, uh, let me go to the, to the pop detail. So he, this is here the pop detail segment now. I think this is a very nice result now. Good flow. Uh, still some stenosis here at the origin of the anterior where we will uh, still have to balloon a little bit, but otherwise I think uh, good results. And here is then, the flow in the tibials, which is also very brisk now. Also, the peronal goes down nicely now after ballooning, hey, taking the sheath out, sorry. And this here is the foot angio. So uh, I think wow. good results, and we're very happy with this result. Great result, uh, Andre. Uh, I just wanted to ask one question. Andre, this is fantastic. Just one quick question. Can you uh, comment on the sizing between the supera and the viobon is it you said half a millimeter smaller usually is okay yeah yes uh, that fits perfectly so we don't have the half sizes of superas as you have so i can tell you whether a six outer supera fits into a six viobon but 5.5 fits fantastic um, into a six viobon well, thank you very much, Andre. Um, we're best to leave you and yeah. uh, move on to the next session and come back to you live in a short while. Yeah. Thank you very much. So yeah. uh, with that, we'll close thank you. this session and we'll move to the next one. I'd like to invite